Uh, the first question, <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to say the person's name, but nor am I going to read the question verbatim, uh, because it was an interesting question. The person knows that I used to be a hammer thrower. I was really, I think I was born to be an Olympic hammer thrower. Uh, but, uh, when I was growing up, it was really hard to find the event. Um, it was hard to get it done at track meets because of the, the perceived danger of it. Um, yeah, I mean, if you get hit by a hammer, it's bad, but there's no difference between that and, you know, a lot of other stupid things we do. Uh, the person asked me a question about an article written years ago. It showed up for the first time in Muscle and Fitness magazine, showed up at a bunch of other places, and it was about Yuri Sadiq, the great Soviet hammer thrower, who still has the world record, who I spent many lunches, breakfasts, and dinners with throughout the years. Uh, my daughters have plenty of stories about Yuri. Uh, he passed away a couple of years ago. And it's about this person who said that they had the secret of what the Soviets were doing. And the secret was this exercise called the step up. And I one time at lunch asked Yuri about this article and he got visibly angry. He usually never showed emotion. The Soviets hold back pretty well. But in this case, he got angry and he said that this was full of crap. He said no, it was much more vulgar than that. But uh, the person had never been there, never trained. And one of the things, uh, and he even said this, it was, it was absolutely uh, pure candor with me about uh, Coach Bondarchuk. Um, that's, he would say to me all, all the time, you know, these articles, that's not what we did. You know, we did other things. So it was interesting because I pulled up, this is All American Athlete. It's a Weeder magazine um, where actually the original material about Yuri's training came up. This is the April 1965 edition. Uh, on the cover is a hammer thrower, uh, which is interesting. That's Hal Connolly. And inside here, there's an article called You Can Make It. Build tremendous leg power fast with your own leg power box and basically it's someone you you make a little box and then you step up on it with weight on your back and it becomes the answer to all your questions and the only reason i even and I, i'm not even i'm trying not even to rant or even be mean because it's a good question but one of the things that happens and it happens a lot in our field is that someone will hear something see something and all of a sudden that becomes the new truth. Like you'll watch the world champion train and all they do is singles in the power clean with 140 kilos, uh, 315 pounds. And you say, the secret to being the best shot putter in the world is power cleaning 315 pounds for seniors, uh, for singles, <laughs> I'm a senior. Uh, now, the problem is of course, when you find out about that day, you discover that the university they were training at only had bumper plates that went up to 315, 140K. And that's all that the elite track and field athletes had to train with. Then you find out that this athlete was just taking it and doing some singles just to kind of warm up, just to loosen up in the weight room, as a lot of us used to do. Um, lift, You'd lift weights first and then you'd go out and throw. I think that's the bulk of my career, actually, um, because it felt good. And this person was just doing it. So you take this one tiny, and I want to say sliver, but it's smaller than a sliver of a person's training, and you extrapolate that into an entire training program and system. Uh, we see this a lot. It's that bugaboo we used to have in the United States. If you put the word Soviet on it, uh, if there was a fungus that grew under a, a flight of stairs, but the Soviets ate it, of course, that was the secret to success. Uh, when I worked with my friends who were uh, from the Soviet Union, including Yuri, Vasily would be another one. We spent a lot of time. They kept saying, no, that's not what we did. Uh, my friend Vasily, we snatched, we cleaned, we jerked, we front squatted. And what else? Well, then we do it again. And But the thing is, in a local meet, you know, to get on the podium, you had to lift more than those other guys. And they were getting very strong. And so the competition uh, built them up. So this isn't a rant by any means, but I just wanted to start this off. And I'm not sure I always get this off, uh, this kind of stuff off clear enough. That's why I have this thing called the inner circle. And the inner circle, uh, we're opening a new group. Uh, where's the email on that? Uh, pardon me. The, 
The site is danjohninnercircle.com. Uh, we meet weekly. Uh, I act, we have a WhatsApp account. We talk. Uh, m most of the people uh, on the inner circle, we, we'll, we'll have extra conversations somewhere out of nowhere about things. But the nice thing about it is if somebody comes and trains with me one day, and I have a funny story, uh, Lyle McDonald, you know, the low carb guy, uh, his, his book, Cyclical Ketogenic Dieting, uh, was the first time I ever read something in a PDF. I had to download Adobe Acrobat because I didn't know how to, I'd never even heard of a PDF before. And uh, Lyle and I are good friends. He's a, yeah, I think he's a great man. Uh, he came over to watch me train one day and I was at the end of a long, long couple of years of training and I had kind of circled my weaknesses. And so one of the things I was doing in my off season was I was doing extra leg curls. Well, he came in and he said, I'm so disappointed. And he was joking. I'm so disappointed to see the great Dan John doing leg curls. And we joked because if that's all you saw me do in that eight or nine or 12 year period that I was really at my, my best as an athlete, he saw me have that one workout where I was doing leg curls. I was doing ab work and arm work. It was a deep off season program. And I was working on a few issues of mobility, flexibility, and some muscle groups that I thought had lagged behind, <laughs> you would say that all I do to train is leg curl. Well, basically I leg curl for about two weeks in a 12 year period. If you're in something like the inner circle, you can say something like that and I have a chance to explain it to you. I wish everybody had the opportunity just to sit down sometimes and just ask that great question, what do you mean by that? Now, I use that all the time in, in my field. Like, like the, the old joke is, you know, if you if you have a theology background and you're at a party, someone always say to you, well, I'm very spiritual. And of course, the follow-up, which I learned later on, is what do you mean by that? When someone says they're into training, I used to think that they probably Olympic lifted like me. And then I say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, about every two weeks, I take a walk for about eight minutes. Well, the difference between <laughs> preparing for an Olympic lifting meet and, <laughs> you know, doing an occasional walk or, you know, sauna at a gym is, is radically different. The nice thing about the Inner Circle, and it's danjohninnercircle.com if you want to apply for the next group. About only 10 to 15 people are in there because it's, it's got to stay small. We meet, we meet a lot. We talk a lot. But what we do is we get to this question, what do you mean by that? If you say you're a goal-oriented person, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by goal-oriented? And, and, and I like it a lot. I, I think there's value to this. Um, it would be interesting if you're listening. Uh, it, it might be fun to put this in the comments. Uh, what are the kinds of things that you hear uh, in fitness and bodybuilding and training that you want to say, well, wait, what do you mean by that? Uh, and it happens, it happens a lot sometimes. I know it sounds weird. If you've never gone through this mental exercise, it might sound like I'm a lunatic. But if you've done it where you've actually stopped and said, well, these people train, you know, 12 hours a day? And then you, and then you have the follow up question. What do you mean by that? Oh yeah, they do meditation for two hours. They take a one hour sauna. They get a one hour massage. Oh, okay. So that's included in the training time. A three hour nap is training, you know, all of a sudden things make sense. Um, so if, if you get a chance, if you're interested, danjohninnercircle.com, uh, love to have you. And if there are questions that I can answer about what do people mean by this? You know, put a comment in there. And by the way, while you're there, you know, why don't, if it would do me a great favor if you would subscribe to this uh, channel. And the and the only reason I say that is that um, I get buried a lot by people who are uh, influencers, uh, but and they'll do they'll talk about kettlebells or, or Olympic lifting, and frankly, I'll try not to swear, but they don't know very much. They don't have very much experience. They've never met, you know, they've never, you know, Olympic lifted in a meet or they've never done, you know, a cert or they've never trained with good kettlebell people. So there you go. So if you can, you know, ask, ask good questions here 
And if you can, like and subscribe if you can. All right, that was just a little bit of a rant, but uh, I, I, the point I was trying to make, and I don't even want to answer this question truly, is that you got to be very careful, especially now. I used to believe everything I read on the internet. It's true. And now my discernment process is much higher. But, you know, when you read things in magazines, I, as a child, I always took it as true. And now I know much better. So I would say the same about the internet. So let's practice a little bit of discernment when we when we try new things or hear new things.